Last week, Nell quit college and gave up her dream of being a child psychologist. Instead, she decided to manage a rock group led by an ex-convict. She tried to get the band on Gary Collins' Our Magazine show, but Gary was not too thrilled with them. When Nell went backstage to tell the leader how much she hated the number, she discovered he'd been in prison for murdering the music critic who didn't like one of his songs. See, I thought you were gonna kill me when I said I hated your song. <laughs> You hate my song? Who said that? You didn't know. You stood right there and said you hated my song. No, I didn't. No, 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 no. I said I loved it. So you just didn't understand me because of the laughter and the beating of my heart. No, no. Uh, 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 everywhere you go, your eyes, ooh, I love that song. Yeah. Did Gary love it? Oh, yeah. He loved it so much he wants to hear another one. I haven't got another one now. What? Yeah, I was gonna write one, but I got paroled. <laughs> well, can't you fake one? Fake one? I can't even play that one. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I better go tell Gary that you can't no. do what? Why can't we just do the first one again? You said Gary loved it. I did say that, didn't I? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, well, actually, he would like to hear something just a little different. A little more upbeat, a little faster. I don't sing fast, Nell. I depend on a slow, sexy delivery. I'm the Johnny Mathis type. <laughs> I'm as helpless as a kitten. I, boy, I better go tell Gary that you can't do this. Okay? No. What? I got an idea. What? Why don't you sing the song, Nell? You said you used to be in show business. Oh, no. Yeah. You can sing it as fast as you want. What do I care? I can't play. No. <laughs> I don't sing anymore. Don't you want us to have a second chance? Me, 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 me. <laughs> well, I think they liked us, don't you? Yeah. I think we did a great job. Oh, girls. Thank heaven you're here. You got to help me. See, if I don't go on stage and make second chance look good, I might lose my life. You want us to sing at your funeral? <laughs> I know all the words to Rock of Ages. No, I'm too young to die. You? Oh, shut up. Look, I want you to be, be my backup singers, OK? All you have to do is just sing in my key. What's the key? <laughs> just do what I do, OK? So, mm, mm, mm. do it together. Mm. Wow, that's terrific. I think you just saved the life of somebody I really love. Me. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you gotta love them. Thank you, Happy. That was wonderful. You know, some of the acts we've had here were so bad they smelt, which incidentally is on the menu for only $6.95. <laughs> but seriously, folks, it's not often that we ask an act to appear twice here on Amateur Night at Skipper Duane's, but because Gary Collins loved them so, here they are again to sing for you the one and only Second Chance.
Oh, well, when do you want to have my show? Well, listen, I've got a house band. It's you that I want. I want you on my show. Well, that's nice, but what about my band? Listen, I don't do variety often, but I think my audience is going to love you. Listen, take this and call this fellow. That's my talent coordinator, all right? Oh, but no, uh, I'm a retired singer. Sinatra told me the same thing. Bye-bye now. <laughs> Hey, Nell. Huh? Uh, I want to talk to you. Okay. Guys, I've been, I've been talking, and we, uh, we don't think it's going to work out for us. What? Yeah, you, we don't think you're right for the group. You sing too loud. <laughs> you don't sound like a convict. Ah, oh, and I thought you didn't know anything about music. Uh, <laughs> well, we just want to thank you for all you tried to do for us. You're a good person, Nell. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell Bubba to look you up when he gets out. Whoa, 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 didn't I tell you? I'm thinking about going back home to Alabama. No, Morocco. That's where I always wanted to go. My roots. Addie! What about the ladies' table? Leave it. I'll take care of it. Good night. Good night. Now? Honey, what are you doing? I dropped Katie off. I went by the house. I paid Joey's babysitter for you. I waited. You never showed up. Oh, Addie. Addie. What's wrong? Addie, I've been thinking, and I've been thinking, and I've been thinking, and I've been thinking, and I still don't have to think. <laughs> now, let me make it simple for you. Don't go back in the show business. Go back to college. Professor Barrett would welcome you with open arms. I don't think so, Addie. Not after he sees what I carved on my desk when I left. Touch might like some coffee. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks. You gotta love him. <laughs> now, you told me you hated the life of a singer. I mean, being on the road all those months, all the crummy bands and the yes, lousy Addie, hotels Addie, and the awful please. food. Addie, I just... Those are just excuses I made up because I didn't make it, you know. I didn't get a break. But now maybe this is the right time for me. No. Don't make a decision this big on the rebound. You've got to give it more thought. I have given it thought, Addie, and I just don't know what to think, OK? OK. Well, you know how I feel, but you've got to make up your own mind. But I'm telling you, honey, if you would ask anybody, anybody, they would tell you to go back to college. Excuse me. Um, I have a chance to go on the Gary Collins show and to be a singer, you know, possibly start a whole new career, even though I did, you know, I was a singer a while back and it didn't work. Anyway, do you think I should go back to Glenlawn Community College, even though Professor Barrett passed me over for that child psychology training course at Stanford, or should I chunk the whole thing and just become a singer? No entiendo. No hablo inglés. Thank you. You're a big help. I'm going to be a singer. I really don't believe you, Nell Harper. Ah, 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 ah. No more Nell Harper. From now on, it's just one word. Nell. Just like Madonna. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Welcome back. Uh, I'm still talking with a very talented Nell Harper, who's going to sing for us in just a few minutes. But before that, I'd like to introduce a very, very interesting couple. Now, they're both anthropologists. They've been married to each other for 15 years. 
But more importantly, they've just spent a year on a tiny Polynesian island, and they've written a book about it. Please welcome doctors Jane Keller and Raymond Michelson. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice welcome to the show. Oh. You know Helen Harper? Hi, Helen. Hi. Well, let's start with a little geography. What was the name of the uh, the island that you spent the year on? Boratania. Uh, Tan Tan. Uh, Boratania is the name recognized by the United Nations. Although you know how behind the times the UN is. <laughs> we were. Uh... Tan Tan is the name the islanders took after the revolution last year. Still, the correct name is Boratania. They got. Tun Tun on the T-shirts at the airport. Oh, true. true. <laughs> Be that as it may, you've you've written a very wonderful book about that year on uh, Boratania. Yes, we. Tun uh, Tun. <laughs> we call it growing up below the equator. Wait a minute. Hmm? I think I just bought that book. Ah. Isn't that about uh, raising children in a primitive society? Yes, yes it is, Nell. And, and we found some amazing similarities between Western society and Boritania. <laughs> all in all, it's a little bit like Pittsburgh with a beach. <laughs> I can't agree. You, uh, <laughs> you see the take, for example, our own son. Well, let's not discuss our family on television, <laughs> Just Raymond. for an example. Yeah, uh, how many children do you have? We have the one, uh, Seven. boy, <laughs> Milo. Ray doesn't count the six children I help support in Laos. <laughs> I thought that was Korea. It's Laos. Laos. It's always been Laos. Not Korea. And I'm just sick of you calling it Korea. <laughs> well, any, anyway, we discovered that our son Milo uh, experienced the same problems in relating to his Boritanian peers that he had back home. Well, that's because you made him so neurotic about I being did short. did not make him neurotic <laughs> You about put lifts in his tennis short. shoes, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> well, we're going to be right back. We'll take a short break and uh, continue our fascinating discussion with these two scientists. So stay there. We'll be back in a minute. I did not make <laughs> him neurotic. I merely explained to him that being short was insignificant and unimportant. I hardly think insignificant is the proper word to use for a 15-year-old boy who's four foot two. Uh, listen. <coughs> listen, if, if I can just make a suggestion. Now, I, I think we're getting a little bit uh, oh. off the track. And when we come back, if we can just get into the book and kind of get a little more general about it, uh, your, your son's experiences, for example. Uh, okay. But what, what was the thing that they did, uh, that, that game that the kids played on the island? Uh, wasn't it similar to our baseball? Yes, it is similar. <laughs> Gary, it's, it, it's <laughs> quite similar, only they use a coconut instead of a baseball. It's very hard. It's a lot more dangerous than Jane baseball. was always a little afraid Milo might get hit in the head with coconut. And <laughs> he did. He well, did. Well, <laughs> he's forgotten about it. I don't Well, of course he forgot about it. It's because he had a temporary loss of memory of right after the game. <laughs> See, that, that's perfect. That's the kind of thing we want to talk about. I mean, it must be a fascinating experience to be involved in another culture. Oh, please. <laughs> no, thanks. No, thanks to the boy's mother. If she had her way, he'd have spent the whole time in a hut playing with that stupid computer she drug along. stop? Will you just Do you stop? think that she went to one of his coconut ball games? <laughs> Gary... They were in the playoffs with the island of Kava. That's been a doll. I just wanted the kid to have a little fun, that's all. It was supposed to be a learning experience. Well, he wasn't there to just have fun. <laughs> but you know, kids learn more when they're having fun, don't you think? Yes, I do, Nell. <laughs> I think that's true. Well, he would have had fun if his mother had been a little less overprotective. A 15-year-old boy still needs protection. But sometimes children need protection from the very ones that are trying to protect them. Oh, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> what are you doing, <laughs> trying to say that I'm yeah. keeping my son dependent on me? Is that if what you're saying? she's not saying it, I certainly will. Good oh. observation, Well, why Nell. don't you take Nell with you to Terra Uza next year? Why not? Instead of me. At least she listens to me. How long is she going to listen to you after you've eaten bark for two weeks? <laughs> I, I didn't mean to start anything. I, I was just listening. Which is something Jane has never done. I'd like to know, I'd like to know where you get off telling me how to raise my child, sweetheart. Well, it's just that I hate to see a child caught between two parents. Because you know what happens? It always ends up with a kid being Hurt. All right, here we go. Well, welcome back. Uh, we've just been having a wonderful, uh, if not lively, discussion. Uh, 
about growing up on this Polynesian island, and I must say, I was so impressed, Nell, with your knowledge about uh, children and uh, relationships and, and so forth. Now, I mean, uh, this is in no way denigrating a singer, but you're a wonderful singer. But your knowledge, your grasp of child psychology, have you, have you been interested in that for some time? Well, yes, but, well, up until recently, mm -hmm. I, um, my major was uh, child psychology at Glen Lund no kidding. College. Yes. Glen Lund? Oh, yes. Yeah. With Professor Barrett. Oh, yeah, oh, boy. you know what? Hey, get <laughs> Barrett is a very old friend of ours. Old. Oh. The man is old. Okay. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he's watching the show the right now. Uh, Lionel, this girl is terrific. Oh, she is? Well, put this in your banana leaf and smoke okay. it, Raymond. You're a third-rate anthropologist. That again. You're an incompetent yes, father, yes. and you're a lousy camper. <laughs> this mere girl knows more about children than you and your 12 Koreans six, six, will ever, six ever from Laos, know. from Laos. No, really, I, I, I'm really not that good, because if I were... Professor Barrett wouldn't have passed me over when he chose the students for the child psychology program at Stanford. He passed you over? Yes, he did. Oh, Lionel, what is the matter with you? Are you drifting again? <laughs> this young woman is exactly the sort we need in the field. <laughs> Don't give it a second thought, Nell. You go back, get your degree, give me a call. I can get you into 50 training programs. You can do that? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, sure, just like you did with that Linda Fleming. Jane. And Sarah Mindlin. Please. And little Tina Morgan. Jane. I hope you like Brahms. Those were just students of mine. <laughs> did you hear that, Professor Barrett? Now, now wait a minute, Nell. Does this mean that you're going to go back to college and give up that shot with a singing career? Yes. And just wait till he sees what I carve on my desk next year. <laughs> well, aren't you going to sing for us? Well, I didn't say I wouldn't sing. I mean, I, although I am going back to school, but I wouldn't miss a chance to sing in your show for all the tea and tauntaun. <laughs>
Daddy, what are you doing here? I couldn't wait. Julie let me in. I just had to hear about your first day back in Professor Barrett's class. No, it's okay. He's thrilled I'm back. That's wonderful. Then he didn't see you on TV. Yeah. In fact, he thought I was brilliant. I don't understand. He must have heard you say you carved something about him on his desk. Yep. And he was real impressed that I used the old English spelling. J-E-R-K-E. -E. <laughs> he saw that and it still went all right? Mm-hmm. And he also wrote something he told me he wanted to look at and tell him what I thought. Now that's fantastic. I mean, I knew you had the talent to be a child psychologist, but your first day back, Professor Barrett writes a paper and he wants you to look at it? Oh, he yeah. must be overwhelmed. I mean, tell me, exactly what did he say? Well, he said... Have I got a song for you. <laughs> Professor Barrett, who teaches psychology, writes songs? Yep. Listen. <clears throat> Sick Little Boy. Words and music by L.B. Barrett. Eric is a happy boy whose life seems so melodic. But underneath the surface, he's really most neurotic. He suffers from paranoia and also from schizophrenia. Eric, 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 your problems are so many. <laughs> oh, that is the worst song ever written. I mean, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna do what's right, Addie. I'm gonna tell him the song is brilliant. <laughs> Eric is a happy boy whose life seems most melodic. 